Chapter 21 The Surgery You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 21 The Surgery, Sister Sue, my mom asked me to bring some hot water for you. Aria said with a string of copper coins in hand. Aria knew Zhang's situation. Her mother also gave Zhang some porridge secretly out of pity. My mom told me we couldn't take this money. Sister Sue, please keep it. Su Muge didn't receive it. This is for you, please take it. I need your help after a while. If there's anything you need, just say. Considering Zhang's situation, Su Muge didn't stand on ceremony so she told her what she needed. Leaving area to look after Su Muge, she went to the end of the village with Hudu and asked the only barefoot doctor in the village for some medicine for Zhang. Zhang's leg had begun to rot. The rotten meat must be cut out, or the leg would be useless. She was poisoned but she did not dare to use her power on the palm since she had not grasped the use of it herself. It was late after everything settled down. As Zhang was still weak and the light turned dim, she could not conduct the surgery until tomorrow. Consequently, Su Muge could only ask Arya to decoct the medicine for Zhang. Thanks a lot for what you have done today. Sister Su, you really don't go home with us, do you? There is dot no place to rest here. Seeing only one earthen bed and a broken table with two broken chairs, Aria said again. No. Thank you. We will go home and come tomorrow. Aria left with Hudu and Zhang fell asleep. Raising the oil lamp, Su Muge saw the medicine from the barefoot doctor. The medicine looked poor. She had no choice but to make do with it. The night in the village was very quiet. Su Muge, leaning on the table, fell asleep gradually. Who? Who are you? The sharp cry woke Su Muge up. A fat woman with a narrow forehead and prominent cheekbones pointed at her. Su Muge sat up and turned to look at Zhang who was lying on the bed. Zhang was awake and staring at the fat woman with big, resentful eyes. Wang, what are you doing? Do you come to see that to see if I have starved to death? Zhang was infuriated and wanted to get up. It was Wang, the elder daughter dot in dot law of Zhang, who used to come to see if Zhang had died every two or three days. Wang glanced at Zhang aversively. Mom, I just brought some food to you. Don't put it that way. The Lang hasn't married. It is a local tradition that the one who suffered bereavement couldn't get married in three years. What Wang said was truly heartrending. Su Muge had made it clear who Wang was after hearing how Zhang called Wang. Before she came, her mother had introduced the family members of Zhang's to her. You must be my elder aunt. It's very thoughtful of you to bring the food to my grandmother so early in the morning. After hearing what Su Muge said, Wang looked her up and down meticulously. What Su Muge was dressing seemed to be not affordable for the villagers. And her eye was covered by a handkerchief. Though it was too dark to see what she looked like, Wang still felt Su Muge was charming. Who are you? Are you the elder sister dot in dot law's daughter? Wang said and felt something strange. Except for Zhao, she had a sister who married a packman in town and had two daughters and one son. She had met one of the daughters before who had no such disposition. My parents were worried about my grandmother after knowing that she fell down so they asked me to visit her. Your parents? Wang frowned and was amazed with her eyes wide open. She clapped her hands and said, Are you the younger sister dot in dot law's daughter? Su Muge nodded rather than denying her. Considering Zhang's situation, she felt only she herself was not enough so she negotiated with Wang. Is that I asked your mother that asked you to visit the old dot your grandmother? It's you. You went to the capital city and become a lady in the official family. I must go back immediately to tell your elder uncle. Wang changed her countenance and became so excited that her fat was shivering. She turned and ran away, forgetting taking away her basket. Su Muge took a glance at the basket. There was a broken bowl with some stale porridge in it. 
who knows what evil thing the shameless woman is considering. Muge, your grandmother is all right. You, you'd better go back. Having seen Su Megu being so worried, Zhang said so. She used to think that Zhao had led a happy life with Su Luan, but now it turned out that Zhao had concealed many things because Muge should come here herself and was adept at taking care of others. Grandmother, I will go back until you feel better. Otherwise, my mom will blame me. Su Muge went out. She decocted the medicine for Zhang first and then cooked some porridge with a small pot brought by Aria. Sister Su, you woke up so early. Aria came bouncing into the room with a basket in her arm. My mom asked me to bring some pancakes to you and Aunt Zhang. And also I brought the things you required yesterday. Su Muge didn't stand on ceremony this time, and she said, thank you. After feeding Zhang medicine, Su Muge lighted the only oil lamp in the room and pierced Zhang's acupoints with the silver needles borrowed from the barefoot doctor. After a while, Zhang fell asleep. Aria was surprised. Sister Su, what, what are you doing? Su Muge didn't raise her head. I will perform surgery, or the leg would be useless. She opened the windows and the door so that there would be enough light in the room. Then, she disinfected the knife with liquor took out from the basket and prepared to deal with the rotten part on the leg. Wait outside, and don't let anyone in. Aria was frightened by Zhang's leg, so she nodded, running away with her face turning pale. After disinfecting the knife with the fire for a while, Su Muge started to clean the rotten part skillfully. Su Muge was experienced in such surgery. She was born into a family pursuing Chinese medicine. After years of immersion in this area, she became good at drawing inferences about other cases from one instance. As a result, she spent time studying Western medicine every day, which helped her achieve a perfect combination of Chinese and Western medicine. Su Muge did not perform the surgery slowly. So to speak, she did it quite quickly yet with every step being accurate. Aria, what are you doing here? Did you consider here your own home? Go away. No. Sister Sue asked me to be here. No one is allowed to enter the room before she comes out. I'm her uncle. She will not dare to stop me. Zhao Ming pushed Aria away and went into the room. After dressing the wound, Su Muge covered Zhang with a quilt. Before Su Muge stood up, Zhao Ming and some others came in. My elder niece came here. Why didn't you tell your uncle when you arrived? Zhao Ming, the second son of Zhao's, was at home this day. Wang hummed and intended to hold Su Muge's hand with a grin on her face, but she didn't feel awkward after Su Muge parried her very skillfully. My elder niece, we can talk in the house. You must be hungry. Your aunt will cook for you in a while. Su Muge glanced at the faces of the two with a trace of smile on her face. If I left, what would happen with my grandma? After talking about Zhao, the two felt it was so inauspicious. Zhao Ming said immediately, you didn't know that your grandma had fallen down not long ago and couldn't get up later. She insisted that she would move to the old house so as to avoid encumbering us. Otherwise, she would eat or drink nothing. We had no other choice but move her here. Wang nodded and said, exactly. We had no other choice. Hearing this, Su Muge turned her face gloomy. Really? But my grandma told me she wanted to go back home to lie down just now. It. Wang looked depressed. Zhang would pass away soon or later. She didn't want her to die in their house because her son was old enough to get married. Zhao Ming thought for a while with her eyes rolling, and she smiled, so my mom wanted to go back. No problem. I will ask someone to carry my mom back. Hearing this, Wang was unhappy and threw a glare. When she was about to say something, Zhao Ming stared back at her. My sister dot in dot law, let's go back with me to ask some others for help. Wang grunted and went out. Going out of the shabby yard, Wang asked, what are you doing? 
Do you want the old woman to die in the house? I can tell you her room has been reserved for Delang's marriage. Zhao Ming was angry but he knew what was more important. Don't you want the money anyway? What? My sister asked her daughter to come back eagerly. If she knew what we have done to mom, do you think she would give us money? Wang calmed down after hearing this. Anyhow, she wouldn't stay here for long. We can carry her back after getting the money. You are right. How clever you are. Wang went back to ask her two sons to carry Zhang back. After much struggle, Zhang was carried back to the house. As Su Muge had thought, Wang had built the houses after receiving the money brought back by Zhao. There was a yard with eleven rooms. Except for the living room and Zhao's previous room, each of the three sons owned three rooms. Su Muge asked Wang for some hot water. After cleaning Zhang, Su Muge changed her clothes. Looking at Zhang's well-bandaged leg, Wang was ashamed. Had you invited the doctor for mom again? The doctor had said that the leg dot was hard to cure. Su Muge said nothing about Wang's question but went to decoct the medicine herself. Dot as long as grandmother could survive three days, it had no great problem for her to recover after careful care. Mu Muge, wash dot wash face. Zhao Shun, the eldest son of Wang's, came over with a basin of water, staring at Su Muge's face eagerly, which made Su Muge frown. No. Thanks. Zhao Shun stared at Su Muge, tiny hands and swallowed. He was unwilling to leave. He had been sixteen years old and his mother was trying to find her daughter. In. Law. He thought if he could marry a girl like her cousin how wonderful it would be. At night, all of Zhao's families had returned. They were in the living room, looking at Su Muge as if she was a prisoner. Su Muge glanced at them and sat here silently. Wang was impatient and couldn't help nudging her husband Zhao De. Zhao De coughed. Did you return alone this time? Su Muge knew that the question was to test Su Luan's attitude towards his wife and daughter. After all, it looked strange that Su Muge appeared by herself. My father arranged three guards, two servant girls, and a driver to come with me. I was afraid they wouldn't be accommodated at home so I let them wait in town. If all the six people came, there was no room for them. The Zhao family accepted this answer. My niece, this time, did your mother ask you to bring something back? Chapter 22 What's done cannot be undone you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 22 What's done cannot be undone with her lips slightly raised up, Su Muge managed to smile, but there was no such emotion in her eyes. It was such a pity that her emotion was ignored by those people because they were overwhelmed by the things she possibly had brought back. I left all the things in town. I'll bring them to grandma when I go back. Now that they had got the answer, the Zhao families dispersed after a few more casual words with Su Muge. Zhao Ming offered to accommodate her by letting her share a bedroom with his eldest daughter but was refused. He was told that she had to take care of Zhang. Do you know what good stuff has your little sister brought us? Daolong is going to make a proposal, and a gift from the city will be perfect with dignity. Wang went back to her room, and the greed on her face was too obvious to cover. Zhao Shun was sitting aside, and those words reminded him of that dirty yet delicate face of Su Muge. Mom, a wild girl from the neighboring village will never be qualified to compete with my cousin. The unintentional words from Zhao Shun's mouth made the room quite all of a sudden. Her eyes brightened with excitement, Wang took a look at Zhao De. Our son is right on this. Those wild girls from villages will never become anything like the daughter born in a family of public officials. Since Su Muge is your younger sister's daughter, why not marry her and strengthen the ties between our two families? Zhao De had been managing someone's business in town, and thus he was usually more considerate than the wife. Will my brother dot in dot law be okay with this? After all, this is marriage, so my sister doesn't have her say on such important matters. Where has your wit gone? We'll grab this chance and get her married to our son. 
by the time she and Daolong have dot won't her parents agree. Mom, can. Can I really marry my cousin? Upon hearing the words from his mom, a flush overspread Zhao Shun's dusky face. Why not? She's not a fairy living in the heavens. Darling, you should hurry up now. Perhaps your second younger brother is also into this. Wang's words made Zhao de silenced. Su Muge, on the other hand, had not even a clue on those people's ideas. Zhang used to have a strong body, and thereby soon came back to herself at the night of the surgery. She was a bit confused when finding herself back in the previous room. Dear child, what that what did you give to those bastards? Zhang thought she was carried back only because Su Muge had exchanged something with Wang and the others. With a bowl of egg porridge in hand, Su Muge came forward to her with a smile, Don't worry, Grandma. I did nothing. But, but how can they? Curious about what happened, though, Zhang felt extremely ashamed for she had raised up her own sons to become such bastards. Grandma, you must have someone look after you. The wound won't be healed in a short time even at the best. But thinking of uncle or his family taking care of you, anyway, I've just figured out a way so that they couldn't mistreat you. Would you like to hear it, Grandma? Su Miu had looked over all three sons of Zhang's and decided that except for the third one, an honest and good dot natured farmer, the others were all scumbags with one thing in common, namely greed. As long as taking good advantage of this, they could be well handled. Dot Zhang gave her no response. Su Muge was patient in that being treated like this by her sons, Zhang must have no hope for living longer with her desperate heart. Grandma, you haven't seen my mom for years, and she also missed you very much. Not until your wound heals and you feel well can you go to the city to visit me and mom, right? The mention of Zhao immediately brought some glow to Zhang's face. Your mom. How has she been these years? It's hard to describe as simply as good or bad, but it's enough for her to live on her life with no worries about food and clothing. Zhang was clever and experienced enough to get her point quickly, and knew that Su Luan married another woman from the family of a public official, whose life could not be rivaled with those from a village. Don't you want to visit my mom and her newly born son? They are her most beloved daughter and her grandson at birth. How could she resist them? Su Muge was waiting for her answer and said no more words. It was important that Zhang should convince herself of this first. The two were in silence for quite some time. Fine, Grandma will listen to you this time. Without much time spent together, Zhang could still tell that there were great differences between her daughter and granddaughter in their personalities. Su Muge replied to her with a heartfelt smile. Sure. She reached up to Zhang's ear and whispered something. Zhang listened quietly. Despite the bitterness gathering in the eyes, her mind became firmer. Su Muge looked after Zhang by her side for three days and would keep a few more days because the stitches needed to be taken out from the wound. She would have preferred to go back earlier. Cousin, this, this is for you. Zhao Shun put an oiled paper package in Su Muge's arms and rushed away before she could react. She was then collecting medicine in the yard. Seeing Zhao Erlang, Zhao Shun's younger brother, passing by, she gave him the package without taking a look at it. It's from your elder brother. She then turned around and entered the room. Somewhat simple and honest, Zhao Erlang opened the oiled paper package and found a braised pedito with brown sauce in it. He started eating delightfully without much thinking. Zhao Dalan ran all the way back to his room where Wang was enjoying her fruits. Mom, why doesn't my cousin wash her face clean? He had never seen the real look of Su Muge. Why bothered by this? When she becomes your wife, you can take a look at her face anytime you want. Zhao Dalan laughed at his mother's words. Then, when can she be my wife? What's your rush? She won't disappear. Actually, Wang was a little worried and intranquil herself. She was eager to know what on earth Su Muge had brought these days, and planned to take possession first. 
she wouldn't allow the stuff of her future daughter in law to slip into the other two families. On the fifth night, the Zhao family could not wait anymore since Su Muge had not brought the supposed things yet. Zhao Ming found a chance and spoke at the table. Hey niece, where, where did you keep the things you brought us? I can help you with that. I can use a bullet cart to get them all back, saving your people from sending it here. Putting her chopsticks down, Su Muge smiled at the others, and said, Thank you, uncle. Just leave it to me. I'll go back the day after tomorrow, and tell them to bring all the stuff here. Great. No, I mean, why do you go back so early? Why not stay for a few more days with us? My mom has just given birth to my brother. No one is taking care of her back at home, and I'm worried about them. Zhao Dalong started to panic. Who would be his wife if Su Muge went back? Su Muge ignored their conspiracy and went directly back to Zhang's room after dinner. After a few days nursing by her granddaughter, Zhang gradually built up her health, more energized. Grandma, the stitches can be taken from your wound tomorrow, and I'm going back the day after that. Zhang took over Su Muge's hands in hers. Thank you, my good girl. Grandma encumbered you. Don't say that, Grandma. We are family. Zhang's eyes was filled with joy. You are indeed a nice girl. Contrary to the warmth and comfort here, people in the main room were restless. Dad, Mom, did you hear that? My cousin is going back home. Wang glared at Zhao Dalong, who had been walking up and down the room after dinner and then turned to Zhao Da. Darling, our son is right. The girl is leaving, and we cannot let her leave like this. She was not dumb. How could she get back Su Muge to be her daughter? In law once she left. Zhao De kept silent in his chair, with Wang and Zhao Daolong looking at him with eager eyes. Zhao De raised his eyes overwhelmed by intrigues and plots and lowered his voice. What's done cannot be undone. Let's make her marry Daolong. Then the Su family cannot deny. Great. Once the girl becomes Dalong's wife physically, the Su family will compromise. Zhao Dalong's face flushed red all over upon his parents' conversation, and he hemmed and hawed with no words coming out of his mouth. Darling, what should we do? Come here, you two, and do as I said. With three heads circled up, there were whispers and mutters. Early the next morning, Su Muge finished taking out the stitches for Zhang and Ri applied some medicine to the wound. When the wound healed, Zhang would be as healthy as before. Grandma, you can try to walk on the floor seven days later. It will be good for your recovery. Sure, sure. How fortunate for me to have a granddaughter like you. Otherwise. All sorts of feelings were welling up in her mind. How could she expect that it was her granddaughter from as far as Shenyang Prefecture that came and saved her life? Dear Grandma, please, do not talk as if I were an outsider. The most urgent thing now for you is to take care of yourself and recover as soon as possible. Yes, of course. She fed Zhang with the medicine and was about to go to the rural barefoot doctor to fetch some more for the rest of Zhang's therapy. Just as she stepped out of the room, some big, Weird red satin went into her eyes. It was hanged over the few main rooms and the living room. Sister, are you preparing for Dalong's wedding? I haven't even heard of his engagement with any girl. Son, the second aunt, started to mock at the red satin over the door. Pa. Wang spit out the melon seed shells in her mouth at Sunday, there's so much you don't know. Turned aside and saw Su Muge, who was going out of the yard, Wang was somehow unpleasant about this girl, being imagined as her daughter. In law. Hey niece, you are going to the doctor again. You don't have to buy so much medicine back as a waste. Your grandma is in perfect health. Su Muge quickly walked out of the yard without looking at Wang, pretending that she did not hear her words. Hey, I haven't finished my words. How rude are you? Wang spit two more times, annoyed. Sun laughed with more sarcasm at the scene. Well, well. Sister, 
did you see yourself? That was the way of instructing one's own daughter. In law. But not as usual, Wong didn't retort this time. Sun didn't notice any difference there, and she didn't want to bother. She went away herself to look for some chit chat. Having arrived at the place of the rural barefoot doctor, Su Muge was then told that the doctor went to the mountain for herbs, and wouldn't be back in a few days. She couldn't wait that long, and who knew what kind of trick and would prepare for her. In this way, she had to go to the town for the medicine. Before she entered the yard gate, Zhao Dalong came out with a bullet cart. Ku, cousin, Su Muge never liked Zhao Dalong, because there was always a hint of lust and coveting in his look. Cousin. Su Muge entered the yard after the emotionless greeting. Cousin, I'm going shopping in town. Do, do you have anything to buy? Having paused for a moment, Su Muge turned her head and looked at him. You are leaving for the town. Zhao Dalang nodded with a smile, as he felt delighted that Su Muge looked at him. Sure, sure. Lips tightened, Su Muge reminded that she heard a lot about this village recently, and knew that the Zhao family was quite decent in the village, depending on that silver worth Ten Liang sent by her mother every year, though. Except for the village head, the Zhao family was the only one that owned bulls. Now that time had passed for other transportation tools, without Zhao Dalong's bullet cart, there would be no other way except for walking. But a round dot trip like that would waste her time till late at night. I need to buy some medicine in town. I'll go with you. Hearing of this, the weird smile on Zhao Dalong's face almost betrayed him, yet Su Muge missed such an expression while she was fetching her things in the room. Chapter 23 The Eldest Miss Was Missing You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 23 The Eldest Miss Was Missing It Was Almost Noon When They Arrived in Town. Su Muge first went to the pharmacy to buy medicine and then bought some warm winter clothes for Zhang. With all those done, she returned to the town gate, waiting for Zhao Dalong. Soon Zhao Dalong returned with a jar of liquor and a basket. He put them away on the cart, groped up and down in his clothes for the oiled paper bag, and handed it over to Su Muge. It's already afternoon. You must be hungry, right? I bought you a dough cake made from distiller's grains. It's sweet. Shopping for grandma was Su Muge's top priority, so she forgot to eat something for lunch. It would still take about another one or two hours before they could get back, and she didn't want to be hungry in this long trip. She reached out her hands and took over the bag as Zhao Dalong was looking at her, expectantly and carefully. Thank you very much. Zhao Dalong burst into laughter as he gave it to her, riding his bullet cart out of the town. When she opened the oiled paper bag, a strong scent of wine greeted her, with the tantalizing smell of the deep dot fried dough cake. As a heavy drinker in her previous incarnation who was never beaten by alcohol, she didn't take it seriously with the content of the distiller's grains. She started eating it slowly. With the dough cake in her stomach, her whole body started to turn warm. It was autumn, and the temperature went low in the afternoon even before the sunset. Su Muge, however, felt warm, and in other words, even a bit feverish. She was dizzy and drowsy, looking at Zhao Dalong riding the cart with double shadows. She raised her hand to patter her cheek. It was burning. Sensing something not right, she pinched herself fiercely. The pain made her awake for a moment. Was she drunk? How could she forget that it was the credit of her body in the previous incarnation that kept her sober after drinking, but now, it was all different. As more and more heavy shadows gathered in front of her eyes, she could even hardly tell Zhao Dalong's approaching face. Cousin, cousin. Thrilled and nervous, Zhao Dalong's heart was almost jumping out of his chest. He was told by his father that a girl like Su Muge could not hold much liquor, and thus he asked the owner to mix some wine in the distiller's grains dough cake. He didn't even expect she became such weak after eating it. Anxiously, he rode the bullock cart into a nearby wood. He remembered what his mother said. Once physically related, his cousin could be his wife. 
he carried Su Muge down the cart and put her under a tree. It was dark and concealed. Looking at that dark grey face of Su Muge, he turned aside to dip his sleeve in the jar of liquor and wiped her face. The dust on her face had been bothering him for a long time. When her face was cleaned with dust removed, her true appearance showed up. Zhao Daolong stood surprised. Such a look was much prettier than the girl his mother had arranged for him. There was still one thing on her face that annoyed Zhao Daolong, the veil that was covering one of her eyes. He had always wondered what's the veil for, and therefore, he took it down with his hand out of curiosity. Shit! Screaming, and seated on the ground in fear, he stared at her with eyes widely open. Ghost, she's a ghost, a ghost. He scrambled the way to cart, jumped on it, and hurried away. When Su Muge was lying on the ground, a silver needle between her fingertips fell to the ground with a slight tremble. She was drunk with her body feeling numb, yet her mind sober. She could only blame herself for the carelessness, leaving a chance for Zhao Daolong to take the advantage. The distiller's grains she ate must be the strong type, otherwise, she couldn't get so easily drunk in such a short time. It was not difficult to solve this problem of drunkenness, though. The only thing she needed to do was to prick herself with a few needles for acupuncture, and then she could recover little by little. The wood was not too far away from the town. If she had started heading back after she sobered up, she wouldn't have returned to the Zhao's until the next morning. However, nothing could be worse than an unmarried woman staying out all night. Such things having happened, she could no longer wait until the next day to go back to her mother's. She had to advance the plan, leaving her grandma to those people. She believed her grandma could deal with them. On the other hand, it was already late at night when Zhao Dalong returned to the village. He jumped out of the bullet cart and rushed into the yard, almost running into someone. Ouch. One step back, Wang almost scolded out, but then she saw it was Zhao Daolong. She glanced at his back for a few times. You naughty young man. How can you come back so late? Where's she? Mom, I'm not going to marry that ugly monster. He said so and pushed Wang aside, stepping into the room. Stunned and confused, Wang followed him inside. What nonsense you're talking about. Where's your cousin? Picturing the red spot on Su Muge's eye when taking off the veil, he mumbled for some while and finally spoke, still in the wood. Wang was frozen with shock. What are you talking about? Leaving her alone in the woods. Half waken, Zhao De sat up upon hearing Wang's yelling. Dalong's back. Darling. Dalong left that girl in the woods. Mom, she is an ugly monster. No wonder she covered her eye with a veil all the time. She was hiding her ugliness. I'll not marry her as long as I'm still breathing. Zhao Dalong shouted. Explain all this. Zhao De slapped him on his head. He then told them what happened. Uh, a horrible dot looking face. That explained why our brother dot I n. Law was not worrying about her coming here alone. When Wang heard it, she was a little unwilling to make Su Muge her daughter. In. Law. She wouldn't let the people in the village mock at her son. Exactly. It was a small wood after all, and usually with no wild animals. Just let her stay there for one night. It won't hurt. That was Zhao De's final decision. Zhao De was in charge of a pub in town and had experienced almost every hue of men and things. He would definitely be more discreet than his wife and son. Su Muge was the daughter of a public official. Once known by others she was out all night, or even worse, if Zhao Dalong became the man B to blame for such a situation, the Zhao family would lose their say. At the thought of being able to make an offer with his brother in law who was an official, Zhao De nearly lost his mind to the tiny triumph. Why did he have to bother whether Su Muge was alive or dead? In the wing dot room where Zhang lived, she had fallen asleep early because of the medicine. In the Su mansion of Shenyang Prefecture. And was seated lazily in a wood soft couch carved with pear blossom, 
leavingly Mama squatted on the small couch beside her feet, manicuring her nails. Madam, Madam, they, they are back. A maid with hair worn in a bun ran to the room in a hurry and was stopped out of the door. Where are your manners? How can you break into Madam's room like this? The maid was paled with fear. And took her hands back when hearing the noise. Let her in. Yes, Madam. Hong Yu opened the curtain and let the maid in. My sincere greetings to you, Madam. Come on, what's the matter? Madam, the people who escorted the eldest miss to the Nanching Prefecture are back, but, but. The maid kneeled on the floor, with her voice trembling in panic. A stringent look flashed in the eyes of an, but what? But, but the eldest miss was missing. What are you talking about? Abruptly, and stood up from the couch, with tea spilled on the floor with clatters. Chapter 24 I can give it a try you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 24 I can give it a try, my lord, madam, we're useless servants and deserve to die. We failed our duty to protect the eldest Mississippi. In the central room of the Sioux mansion, two maids, three bodyguards and a carriage driver were making kowtows with deep grief on their faces. They were the servants who had escorted Sioux Muge to the Zhao family in Nanching Prefecture. And frowned with worries. My lord, what should we do? If anything bad happened to that child, Muge. Su Luan didn't look well either, with his face in pale. It was not Su Muge's situation that he was concerned about, but the fact that he had lost one of his chess pieces, which was stifling. You useless things. You couldn't even protect the eldest Mississippi. What's the point of keeping you in the mansion? Su Luan shouted out with anger. My lord, please have mercy on us. We were passing a wood when it was getting dark. We wanted to go to the nearest inn as soon as possible, but the eldest miss insisted on having a rest off the carriage. We were not able to stop her, so we let her get off the carriage. Who, who would know? One of the bodyguards went forward to beg for forgiveness. Su Luan's face looked even worse when the bodyguard finished his words. What was the need for her to get off the carriage? I, I didn't know. But, but I saw some figure out there. A figure. Yes, yes. And the figure looked, looked as if it was a man. A figure. How could there be a man's figure? How dare you make up a story like that? And fumed at the bodyguard after she quickly recovered from the astonishment. Madam, I sincerely trust your wise judgment. I do not have the gut to deceive you and my lord. If I lied with one word, I shall die in my boots and with no descendant. Su Luan banged the table with a loud noise and stood up. Apparently, he was convinced by the story. Such an indiscreet and unfilial girl. And stepped forward with worries and held Su Luan in her hands. My lord, don't be so mad, you could ruin your body. We don't have a clue about it yet. How can we know the real truth only relying on the words from the servants? Su Luan snorted with coldness. If she had not made any appointment with some wild man, how could she get off the carriage at that time in such an urgency? Obviously, Su Luan believed the words of those servants. My lord, I heard that in a few days, Lord Meng from the Hanlin Academy will probably take his mother back to Shenyang Prefecture for recuperation. Holding Su Luan in her arms, and said gently. Su Luan was stunned, and jumped to his feet. How can I forget this? How could he forget that Lord Meng was coming back? Lord Meng was the Bachelor of Hanlin Academy, and his assessment results had already been sent to the Emperor. Before long, he would go back to the capital to report his work. If he could gain the appreciation from Lord Meng, and ask the Lord to recommend him to the Emperor with a few nice words, he could get rid of the power control from his father. In law completely. Su Luan glanced at him. He had been supported greatly by his father. In law through all these years, but more bounds came along with more supports. He knew that Lord Meng had praised highly of the theory that one should regulate his family well before he could rule the state. 
If the missing news about Su Muge was spread out, the others would accuse him of unstrict family regulation, which could certainly have a great negative impact on his reputation. No way. Never could he let such a thing happen. How could Anne possibly know Su Luan's fears and worries towards her father? Seeing that changeable and uncertain looks on his face, and smiled a bit with satisfaction, taking it as a positive sign of Lord Meng's arrival. Not long afterwards, Su Luan spoke. The eldest miss has caught a cold a few days ago, and she is still sick after all these days' treatment. She needs to be nursed in a quiet place in the village, so madam, please arrange the trip as soon as possible. Su Luan then gave a glimpse to the servants kneeling on the floor, and he looked gloomy and dismal. Do you all get what I have just said? How could they dare to show any expression of uncertainty? They made several kowtows immediately. Yes, yes, we totally get you, my lord. Su Luan waved his hand in restless. And told the servants to leave. She poured a cup of tea, came forward and handed it to Su Luan. My lord, do we need to tell my sister lady about this? Thinking of the trouble Su Muge had brought him, he was irritated and grinded his teeth. See! What perfect education has she given to her daughter? Just tell her what I said before. If she tries to stir up any trouble, then find someone to keep a close eye on her. Keep it under control. No problem. I understand. With a few more words exhorted, Su Luan went to the study room. As soon as An went back to the flowery brook courtyard, Li Mama entered. She went close to An and lowered her voice. Madam, I have asked those servants, and they told me the eldest miss had escaped. An's eyes quickly became a line on her face. Her plan was to take advantage of the servant's story and use it to ruin Su Muge's reputation. In that case, in a violent rage, Su Luan would absolutely stop Su Muge and her mother from coming to the capital ever again. It would then be much easier for her to kill them, even easier than pressing an ant to death between her fingers. How could anyone expect that Su Muge had escaped? The current result, however, was not too bad. It was enough to make Su Luan believe that Su Muge had eloped with someone. Even if she was tough enough to make her way back, her reputation would be gone by that time, and Su Luan would never allow such a person who had bring shame to the family to appear in the Su mansion again. And played with the garden balsam on the table with her fingers. She was satisfied. Did you take care of everything? Sure, madam. Trust me. They dare not say a single word wrong. But and shook her head. Just in case of any extra trouble. You'd better think a way of sending them away lest any incident. Sure. I will find some appropriate reasons to send them away soon Ednell.co, good. A simple and crude carriage was passing slowly on the post road with green trees on both sides. The curtain of the carriage was opened, and there appeared a dark grey little face. But even so, the eyes on that face were extremely bright and crystal, making them impossible to be ignored. Just as Su Muge was to put down the curtain, she turned and saw a group of people riding from the behind, becoming faster and faster. The post road was not wide itself, and it was hard for two small carriages to go in a row, let alone a carriage at least twice the size of Su Muge's. She frowned at the carriage. Let's stop on the side road and let the carriage group behind go ahead first. Cool. The carriage driver raised the horsewhip in his hand, and rode the carriage to the side. In the largest carriage among the group which was in the opposite, a woman's sharp voice came out, filled with panic. No, come on, stop. The old lady can't stand it. The curtain of the carriage was pulled back. A girl, round dot faced, was in great anxiety. Shortly after, the carriage once behind was now ahead of Su Muge's small one, and it was stopped in the middle of the road by the carriage driver upon someone's order. It also stopped Su Muge's carriage from moving forward. Su Muge's driver couldn't keep his calmness anymore. He didn't want to take this trip in the first place, because it too was too far for him. He was worried about his wife and children back at home. 
but then he just hoped to carry the girl as fast as possible in order to return earlier. Hey, girl, the road, it is blocked. How should we keep moving forward? Su Muge saw a middle-aged man getting off from one carriage, whose face was filled with anxiety. The man had a delicate beard with the look of a Confucian scholar, and he was in a green robe with bamboo pattern. He hurried towards the largest carriage. How's the old lady? My lord, the old lady was fine just now. But somehow there was suddenly phlegm stuck in her chest, and she fainted. The man stamped his feet with nervousness. What can we do now? The imperial physician who is along with us is lying on his bed because of the cold he caught yesterday. He cannot get up. And he is the only doctor we have. Su Muge almost figured out the situation after hearing their conversation. She looked down after a quick glance at the carriage emblem. She opened the curtain and jumped off her carriage in a fleet. Please wait for me here. I'll be back soon. Uh, okay. Su Muge went towards the carriage group. The cloth of her clothes was not the same type as that was worn by the people in that group. Therefore, she was soon noticed by the guard as she approached the carriage. The guard stepped forward and stopped her. Who are you? Su Muge paused and didn't rush forward. She looked calmly at the direction of the man in a green robe. I'm afraid your carriage group has blocked my way. With a glance up, the guard saw a shabby small carriage on the narrow side road, apparently being pushed aside by theirs. But there was a chaos behind, who would have the time to bother to move their carriage group away. The face of the guard eased a bit. You can go back and wait. Instead of leaving, Su Muge reached out her head to look at the carriage behind that guard. The weather is still hot and dry in the daytime these days. If the person in the carriage were sick because of wind, then it would be fine. But if it were some other sickness or even if the person were healthy, the dryness and the airlessness inside could worsen the situation. Hearing this, the face of the guard turned white and furious. What nonsense are you talking about here? Hurry up, leave. Su Muge didn't lower her voice on purpose when saying this. The man standing ahead also heard her words. He turned and looked at Su Muge unconsciously. Noticing that it was only a dark and thin boy talking, however, he frowned again. Su Muge stayed still and kept staring at the direction of the carriage. With the phlegm in her chest, her bronchial tube could be blocked. Now that she had slipped into a coma, if not saved in time, she could. The man turned to Su Muge again, with his eyes set on her, looking at her carefully. You do know some medical skills, don't you? My lord, if you trust on me, I can give it a try. Su Muge stood there quietly after she spoke, and the man looked her over another time with doubt, but somehow, he ended up with a nod when he saw the honest and integrity in her eyes. My lord, no. What to do? The old lady, she, she is dying. The maid who had screamed before opened the curtain again, yet with tears pouring down her face this time. The man made one step forward and gestured with courtesy. Thank you then, young master. Su Muge smiled with her lips raised a bit. No problem. Su Muge climbed into the carriage. She frowned as she pulled away the curtain. It was so stuffy inside. Besides the sick old lady lying on the floor, there were four made dot look people. The large carriage turned out to be very crowded with so many people in. The one who knows the patient will stay, and the others please get out of the carriage immediately. The maids didn't expect Su Muge would show up in the carriage, and was all frozen without movement. The man became agitated. What are you waiting for? Come on, get off the carriage and make room for the doctor. The maids jumped down the carriage one by one. Although they were confused and doubt about the medical skills of this thin and little man, they dared not to disobey their lord. Su Muge pulled the curtain aside instantly when she got on the carriage, letting more lights and air in. The maid who stayed on the carriage rapidly moved out some space for her. 
She crawled over to the patient, and her eyes experienced a sharp convulsion when she finally took a clear look at the face. Chapter 25 Confession You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 25 Confession Su Muge first felt the pulse of the old lady, and found that her heart was beating very fast, and her pulse was slippery, which indicated that her sickness was caused by the phlegm. She then put her head on the old lady's chest and listened for a while. She vaguely heard some sounds of breathing like snoring. When she had finished checking the old lady's coating on the tongue, she was affirmative that the phlegm in her chest was the essential problem. Once the damp dot phlegm was stuck in one's vessels, a person could easily be stifled to death. She quickly took out the two silver needles with her, sterilized them with the flame on the small table, pulled aside the front part of the robe on the old lady, and pricked the needles in. The maid watched all those in astonishment. Speaking of acupuncture, people in the state of Chu also did this to the patients. However, due to various body conditions, the acupoints and meridians were very difficult to recognize on each body. In addition, this kind of medical skill couldn't be spread or passed on to others easily. So far, there were few people who could use acupuncture, even the imperial doctors in the palace rarely used it. It never occurred to her that such a young boy, not even reaching the age of twenty by her guess, could use such skills to treat the old lady. But what if some mistake happened when he was pricking? Perhaps it was because of the calm aura Su Muge had with her, the maid tried to speak several times, but the words went back to her throat. Right after the needles were pricked into the old lady's chest, her breath eased gradually. By the time Su Muge pulled the needles out, the old lady could almost breathe normally. The maid kept looking at Su Muge in amazement throughout the whole progress. Su Muge put away the needles carefully without even looking aside. Doctor, so the old lady is. The old lady was sick because of the phlegm stuck in the vessels in her chest. Once the vessels are cleared with the needles, she can recover soon with some extra medicine for reducing her phlegm and removing the dampness from her body. Thank you so much, doctor. The old lady made some noise and came back to herself with her dim eyes. Feeling surprised and cheerful, the maid moved forward. Old lady, you're awake. She then turned and opened the curtain to report to the man standing outside. The man seemed to sigh of relief when he heard the news. That is wonderful. Inside the carriage, Su Muge checked the old lady's pulse one more time. Her pulse condition tended to be stable. The old lady slightly turned her eyes. Though with a bit of turbidity, her eyes finally fell on the face of Su Muge. This is. Old lady, this the doctor that the Lord sent for you. The doctor. The old lady was temporarily at a loss, and then she reminded that she felt a sudden dizzy on the carriage and went unconscious. She had some old problems, getting sick now and then, and that was why she brought with her the imperial doctor along this time. But she was well aware that the imperial doctor had been ill for two days. Many thanks to you, doctor. Su Muge lowered her eyes. Old lady, you had a relapse because you are too tired. It'll be the best to keep an eye on your heath all this way along. I shall leave now. Su Muge opened the curtain right away, without staying in the carriage any longer. The man approached her as she got down, and made a bow with his hands folded in front. We were lucky to ran into you. Thank you, young master. Su Muge turned aside and didn't accept his bow. It was no bother and I dare not take the credit. The behavior of Su Muge made the man feel quite comfortable. So where are you heading to, young master? I'm on my way to Shenyang Prefecture. Shenyang Prefecture. The man was a little surprised. We are going in the same direction. If you are alone, young master, why not come with me? There are still a couple of days before we can arrive. The man, Meng Changda, looked at Su Muge and said so. Su Muge nodded with a smile. What a nice coincidence. It could be a bit boring during such a long trip. So I'll not refuse. Great. How about my mother's current condition? 
it would be fine to slow down the pace a little bit. Su Muge went back to her carriage after a short chat with the man. Seeing the letter Meng on the carriage not far away, she put down the curtain slowly. It was for the truth. Born son of Bachelor Meng, Meng Changda, that Su Jingwen had killed her previous body. Su Muge leaned herself on the wall of the carriage, she was thinking that if she went back alone, and would not give up on her easily. However, if the Meng family backed her up, Su Luan could do nothing to her even if it was against En's willingness. After rested for a quarter, the carriage group of the Meng family was ready to continue the trip. Su Muge's carriage followed them slowly. The speed of a carriage group was slower than a single one. With the weak body of old lady Meng, the carriages slowed down more to avoid any bumps. That night, they reached the nearest village from Shenyang Prefecture. The retired imperial doctor at the Meng families had brought with them was quite old. His body was seriously damaged after that cold and was not cured yet. It was Su Muge who felt the pulse every day for old lady Meng. The group of people settled down in an inn. After dinner, Su Muge unpacked and took out the clothes at the bottom. She changed them on. Master Su, the old lady has asked for you. The voice of Rume, the first maid of old lady Meng came from the outside. Okay, I'll go with you. Su Muge tied the belt behind her and opened the door. Thank you for leading the way, Sister Rume. Rume looked at her shyly, and kept on walking with her head down. The two of them waited at the door of the old lady until someone went in to report. Old Lady Meng was lying in the bed, with her head tilted on a soft pillow. She asked the maid to help her up with a smile on her face when she saw Su Muge entered. Master Su, here you came. Thank you so much. It if were not you, I could hardly make it to Shenyang Prefecture. Old Lady Meng reached out her hand, and Su Muge felt the pulse for her. Your body is strong enough, and you'll feel much better after being nursed for some time. Well, for me, if I can live till the day my great-grandson's birth after my grandson's marriage, I would be asking for no more. Su Muge just listened and didn't respond. Instead, she said gently, Old Lady Meng, I would like to ask you for a favor. With a smile on her face, Old Lady Meng held her breath and looked at Su Muge's serious face. Master Su, you have saved my life. Just let me know if you have any difficulty. Su Muge looked down at her feet. She noticed the way of the old lady's wording. The old lady said Su Muge saved her life, trying to avoid any connections that could be made to the whole Meng family. Maybe she was afraid that Su Muge would ask her for some unreasonable requests. However, Su Muge didn't care about this. She never thought the one she had saved should pay off her wholeheartedly. Noticing that Su Muge just remained standing without saying a word, old lady Meng looked at the maids in her room and signed them out. The maids then left quietly. Please say it out. The eyes of old lady Meng became less warm. Su Muge stood up. Looking at old lady Meng, she took off her robe slowly. Old lady Meng was about to reproach her in astonishment but held it back when she suddenly saw a women's dress under that robe in plain color. Old Lady Meng was astounded with her mouth wide open. You, you are a dot actually a girl. Su Muge lowered her eyelids. It was my fault to deceit you, Old Lady Meng. But I had to do so. What about your family name dot was it? I didn't cheat you on that. My family name is Su, and I am Su Muge, the truth dot born daughter of Su Luan from Shenyang Prefecture. Hearing this name, old lady Meng frowned her grizzled eyebrows and seemed to recall something. You are dut the daughter of Lord Su. For many years, old lady Meng had been living in the capital, and she was aware about the things happened in the Su mansion back in those days. She could more or less imagine how much that young girl had suffered in order to come to the capital. It was unexpected, though, she could meet her child one day, whom she heard to be as thin as a baby monkey back then. A few days ago, my grandma was not feeling very well. My mom had just given birth and was not convenient to take a trip, whereas my dad was engaged in his work. 
I didn't want to see my mom getting worried like that, so I went to Nanching Prefecture to visit my grandma. But how could I know that the sly servants had come up with some evil intent on the road? They robbed me for the money and left me in the wood. If it were not those nice villagers who came from my grandma's village, I could be anywhere in the world, and may have lost my life. When speaking out the experience, her tone was so calm as if she were telling the story others. Bang! Old Lady Meng hit on her bed and snorted. What sly and fearless servants! They went so far so as to frame their master. Old Lady Meng came from a family with the highest rank of officials, and therefore she put much emphasis on the rules, despite of her dislike towards the family of Su Muge's mother and her looking down upon Su Luan, who abandoned his original wife and married another one. After all, those were all family affairs of the Su's, and it was not convenient for her to care about. She now understood and could guess why Su Muge had unmasked her identity at this moment, when they were so close to Shenyang Prefecture. Being a girl and staying out alone for so many days, I don't know what kind of punishment is going to wait for me. So please, may I ask you to go back to Shenyang Prefecture with me? Looking at Su Muge bending and lowering her head down, old lady Meng sighed. Though as open-dot-minded as the state of Chu was, the moral integrity of a woman was still valued. If Su Muge returned the mansion alone, a story would be made up against her. However, if people knew that she was with old lady Meng all the way long, it could be a totally different situation. No problem. I can help you with that. Thank you so much, old lady Meng. The gratefulness was expressed with deep sincerity from her heart. Come on, get up, you nice kid. Not long after Su Muge had left, Meng Changda entered old lady Meng's room. Su Muge lied on her bed with her clothes on, and closed her eyes gradually. And, we'll talk about hatred and revenge after I arrive home. In the Su mansion, the maids were walking back and forth busily in the flower room with porcelain plates in their hands. And stepped out of the room and nodded with satisfaction. Madam, it's almost ready. And gave the maid a nod. A young maid walked into the room and bowed to and, Madam, the second miss is waiting for you in the living room. And nodded again and went to the living room with the maid holding her arm. Su Jingwen went forward and took the hands of An, with the smile of a spoiled girl on her face. Mom. An looked at her carefully and she was pleased. My dear daughter Wenner has become brighter and more beautiful. You are so right, madam. I was wondering where this angel had come from earlier. Li Mama smiled with a compliment. Su Jingwen raised her chin with pride, and there was no hint of modesty in her eyes. Mom, so you mentioned that Madame Meng would also come today. And looked at Su Jingwen, and the expression in her eyes already told Su Jingwen that she knew her well about her little motives. Of course. She was told that your father's assessment results had been presented to the Emperor, and she surely will contend with us. Then, how about young Master Meng? And sighed to herself, looking at her daughter. It was obvious that Su Jingwen's shy face explained her misunderstanding of An's words. And had doted on her daughter too much. Su Jingwen had always wanted to become part of the Meng family by marriage. But it was doubtful that she could then live a peaceful and happy life because of the complicated relationship in that family though it was a family of scholars. Madam, Madam Meng has arrived. And stood up at once. Let's go. Chapter 26 A Birthday Surprise You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 26 A Birthday Surprise Madame Meng was a typical woman from a region south of the Yangtze River. She had a petite body and a delicate face. There was gentleness and warmth coming out from every behavior of hers. With the similar age as an, though, she looked younger than an, even if An had always cared about her own body beauty and health. Long time no see, Madame Meng. An went forward with a smile. With a mild and pleasant expression on her face, Madame Meng glanced at Su Jingwen. Standing by An's side, Su Jingwen looked back as if she was a bit distracted. Madame Meng quickly looked away and put her eyes back on An. 
Definitely. A few days ago, I heard that old lady Meng was coming back, and has been busy preparing for her arrival. We know your filial piety to the old lady better than anyone else. I still remembered that when old lady Meng was in her illness, you were there to look after her for three days and nights without even taking a bath. After the exchange of conventional greetings and compliments, and invited Madame Meng into the mansion in person. Right after they were seated in the living room, and touched Su Jingwen in secret as a reminder. Su Jingwen should have made a courtesy etiquette to Madame Meng there outside the door, but somehow the child stood still as if she was enchanted by something. Meng Xiuwen, the master, didn't show up with Madame Meng together, so Su Jingwen was a bit upset. But soon, she stood up and stepped forward with an appropriate smile. My sincere greetings to you, Madame Meng. Su Jingwen bowed slightly with a very standard example of a courtesy. It was not until this moment that Madame Meng set her eyes back on Su Jingwen again. Today is your birthday, second miss, and therefore, you don't have to be too polite. Madame Meng replied with a poker face. There was no emotion mixed in her words. And frowned at such a scene. She had mentioned to Madame Meng about the marriage between the two families in an obscure way, and though Madame Meng hadn't expressed a hint of a consent then, at least there was some room for consideration. But with her attitude today, what did she mean by that? Madame Meng had a few more casual words with Su Jingwen, ordered her servant to bring out the birthday gift, and changed the topic of the conversation from Su Jingwen to something else. Su Jingwen was not dumb and she sensed the coldness in Madame Meng. Her face suddenly turned pale and she was about to collapse. And pinched her daughter covertly. You don't have to be too cautious to accompany us. Why not go and be a nice host to the ladies who came to celebrate your birthday? Yes, mom. Then Su Jingwen led a group of young ladies to the garden. Several girls soon circled around Su Jingwen when they were in the garden. Sister Jingwen, you look so pretty today. A girl with a round face was talking. Her name was Hu Lu, and she was the daughter of a county magistrate whose land was within the jurisdiction of Shenyang Prefecture. Mind your word, Sister Hu. You were talking like Sister Jingwen was not pretty before. With a provoking glance at Hu Lu, a girl who had an oval face took over the words. They were all daughters of Su Luan's subordinates and had been long aware that Su Jingwen was most favored by her father upon the arrival of the Su family. They had flattered her around in the past. You. Stop squabbling. Aren't you annoying? Su Jingwen pulled out a handful of flowers impatiently and threw them on the ground. The two girls arguing shut up quickly. I heard that your elder sister was seriously ill and was sent to the village for her recovery, which is a good thing for you because otherwise she could be an eyesore in the mansion. Hulu knew that Su Jingwen hated Su Muge most, and it was never wrong to belittle Su Muge at any time. Sure enough, Su Jingwen sneered with the air of complacency as soon as someone was speaking disparagingly of Su Muge. Well, to recover her body in a village. Actually, she ran away with some wild man. The girl's eyes were all round in amazement at such unexpected words. Sister Jean Gwen, are you serious? What a story about a lady from the family of a public official had eloped with a man. If she was caught back, she would be hanged up in a pig cage and put in a river. And that was not a heavy punishment. Why shall I lie to you? My mom helped her to cover up the truth. Otherwise, how did you know she went to the village to recuperate? Jesus! The, the eldest Miss Sue was too bold. Standing at the entrance of the garden, with her face in pale, and tried to raise her head with a smile and pretend that she had not heard anything, but she couldn't. The people present were no deaf, and they all heard Su Jingwen's loud words, which were crystal clear. Madame Meng, who was standing aside with her dark and gloomy eyes, took a quick look at him. And could only bit her mouth and pinched herself to keep calm. She opened her mouth with a lump in her throat, sorry, sorry for the stupid story. This was supposed to be a family scandal, and we had no idea that Muge had done it that way. 
She grew up at my sister's, and usually behaved well. Besides Madame Meng, most of the people who came with into the garden were wives of the officials in Shenyang Prefecture, but there were only very few of them who knew about what happened in the capital many years ago, and they thought Su Jingwen was talking about the daughter of some mistress of Su Luan. Madame Meng was the one and only to know who exactly Muge was. Don't worry about it, Madame Su. It's not worth losing you temper because of nobody. After all, she was the daughter of some unimportant mistress, and you are the real hostess of this family. Look at your girl, our second miss, how elegant and virtuous she is. One can tell that she was brought up by you with extreme good education. Yes, precisely. With those compliments, and could hardly hide her laugh. Nobody. Zhao, did you hear that? Why not go back to the room and take a seat? The sun is going to burn. Madame Meng suddenly spoke. And thought Meng was saving her from the embarrassment, so she gathered the wives and left. The elopement of Su Muge with a man was then spread out over the whole Su mansion. Carriages of the Meng family went slowly through the city gate. After entering the city, the carriages didn't go in the direction to the main mansion. Instead, they went towards the Su's. The carriages stopped outside the Su mansion, where Azen, with a group of ladies, was watching a play at the moment. A maid in blue dress went to Madame Meng and whispered to her ear. Madame Meng was in a great shock when she heard about the words. She turned aside and looked up at Su Jingwen who was sitting next to him. Immersed in the excitement of others' contempt against Su Muge, Su Jingwen didn't notice there was somebody looking at her. And, however, felt that something was wrong. Before she could talk, Li Mama had come to her side. Lord Meng and Old Lady Meng from the Meng Mansion have arrived. What? The surprise on Anne's face was no less than that of Madame Meng. Madame Meng hadn't expected that the birthday of a prefecture chief's daughter could drive the attention from both her husband and mother. In law, and jumped up to herself and dragged up Su Jingwen, who was so obsessed with the play. Hurry up, go and greet our guests. Madame Meng stood up as well and followed an out. They left the others in puzzlement. What's going on? Madame Su and Madame Meng looked weird when they went out. No idea. Shall we go after them? But the play has not finished yet. A madam in yellow grinned a bit with her hands on her mouth. Despite of all the compliments to him back in the garden, it was, after all, a family sandal that a lady in the mansion had run away with a man. It should be hided with caution, yet the second miss had told the story in front of so many people, which somehow reflected her poor upbringing. Outside the gate of the mansion, Madame Meng greeted old lady Meng with the face of obedient, whereas and went forward, taking Su Jingwen with her to show their courtesy. Please, old lady Meng. Old lady Meng nodded her head and didn't move. She took a look behind. Where's the child? Come on, why are you hiding behind? All the attention was paid to some point behind the old lady, and there came the slim and thin figure and was the first one to be unprepared toward such a reunion. Su Muge. How could she be with old lady Meng? How come? Didn't you run away with some guy, Su Muge? How dare you come home? Su Jingwen yelled out without thinking too much. Su Muge was in a traditional smoky green suit dress, which had been a fashion a couple of years ago in Shenyang Prefecture. There was only one jade hairpin at the side of her black hair, of which the quality was not quite good. Such costumes were even worse than those maids in some great aristocratic families. She went calmly to the side of old lady Meng and held her hand gently, ignoring other people's strange looks. Dot old lady Meng was pleased and she smiled. She turned to look at Su Jingwen. This must be the second miss of the Su family. The old lady was indifferent to Su Jingwen, which made her shrink a bit with fear. And had to step forward regardless of all the questions and anger in herself. You are right, old lady Meng. Old lady Meng nodded. So what was she saying? She. 
The rage washed over Su Jingwen when she saw that and didn't answer the old lady, and moreover, Su Muge was in a state of pureness and loftiness. Old Lady Meng, she is my elder sister. She left home several days ago, lied to us that she was going to look after our grandma. But then she just ran away with a guy. It was a shame of her to come back like this. If not being abandoned and with no place to go, she could never come back. Jean Gwen, what nonsense are you talking about? Mom, I said nothing wrong. She's the one who made the mistake, and now she is afraid to admit, isn't she? It was so shameless to be abandoned by a man and to have the face to come back. If I were her, I would have hanged myself by a rope. That's true. How can there be such a person in the world with no shame at all? Nonsense. The furious voice from Old Lady Meng with a bit hoarseness made them all quiet. Old Lady Meng, you cannot be fooled by her. Su Jingwen argued. She didn't understand that bad excuses were worse than none. The child has been with me all the way back to Shenyang Prefecture. I did see no man at all. It's you, who kept prating about your sister, that disappointed me so deeply. And was almost frightened to death when hearing so. The Meng family played a decisive role not only in Shenyang Prefecture, but in the capital as well. If word spread out as such that Su Jingwen could not get along well with her sister and even vilified her, she would never be able to marry a descent family. Jingwen, what nonsense are you talking about? The miss is too tired today, take her back to her room for a rest. Hurry up. The maids behind Su Jingwen helped her back in hasty, and she only stopped speaking unwillingly because of the pale look on En's face. Old Lady Meng, please forgive us. That child was spoiled, I shall give her a heavy punishment later. And quickly walked up and apologized for her daughter. But her look toward Su Muge was still puzzled, and this was seen by most people around. Muge, where on earth have you been all those days? Your father has sent the servants to escort you to Nanching Prefecture, and how could you escape by yourself on the way? We were so worried about you. And was determined to ruin Su Muge. How could and let her go when she had made such a fool of her daughter in front of so many people? Chapter 27 You'll pay for what you've got you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 27 You'll pay for what you've got with words coming out from and in front of such a big crowd, it implied the fact that Su Muge did get off the carriage on her way. Old Lady Meng did not help Su Muge this time. There was coldness in her eyes when Su Muge looked down, and then it turned into hatred when she raised her eyes to face him. Well, so it was not Madame that had arranged those sly servants to leave me alone off the carriage. Her voice was not loud, but enough for all the people presented to hear clearly. Although shocked inside and grabbed her handkerchief with much strength intuitively, and appeared calm with her breath eased when thinking of the servants would no doubt listen to her command. Muge, how, how could you think your father as such a person? The bodyguards were all selected by him in person, and how could they hurt you? And was not that stupid, so she didn't mention a word about the maid she had arranged but only the bodyguards that Su Luan had sent. Su Muge had seen all these tricks through. As for An, she had already failed the battle with Su Muge when she let it go public. Su Muge stared at the eyes of An, fearless. It made An step backwards unconsciously with her dour look. I got off the carriage only wanted to get some fresh air. How could I know the evil servants left me right there? If it were not those nice neighbors in my grandma's village that had saved me, I would probably die nowhere. That's impossible. The servant said you ran away with somebody. Su Muge looked at him with another cold glance. Such words filled with contempt must have been the excuses of the servants to excuse themselves from punishment. How can you believe them, madam? I, madam, are you too busy to tell right from wrong? Before and could answer, a strict voice of scolding came from her back. It was Su Luan, and his face was darkened with anger. My lord. He didn't look at him, but walked straightly towards old Lady Meng. He made a bow to her with his hands folded in front. 
I sincerely apologize for my daughter's rudeness, could you please kindly forgive her? Su Luan glanced at Su Muge indifferently after those words. I was told that you had been taking care of Muge throughout the trip. I shall take her to your mansion to thank you in person the other day. Muge, you must be tired after such a long trip. Go back to the mansion and have some rest. Su Muge understood that Su Luan wanted to end this drama as soon as possible. It should never be spread out in the first place. But it was not the appropriate time for her to fight back against Su Luan since she had nothing else but only her weak mother and a new dot born brother. Yes, father. Su Muge turned aside and bowed to old lady Meng. The old lady nodded. Go home then. Su Muge ignored him, who was collecting herself together from anger and pain, and entered the mansion. I am also tired. Jiang, help me back home. Madame Meng and Madame Meng Jiang held old lady Meng obediently. Yes. Seeing old lady Meng and Madame Meng leaving, and was supposed to persuade them to stay out of politeness. However, with what old lady Meng had done and said, those words were stuck in her throat without coming out. Madam Su, it's getting late and it's not convenient for us to stay any longer. We shall leave now. After old lady Meng left, those who came to seek connections with the Su family in name of Su Jingwen's birthday also left. It was easy to tell that An was not in the mood of treating guests at the moment. Though many strange looks received along her way, Su Muge returned to the Peach Blossom Courtyard without looking aside. Peach Blossom Courtyard had been the quietest place in the Su Mansion. Even if with such noises and liveliness in the front yard, it still felt remote here in this courtyard. Mei Hua was carrying a basin of water out when Su Muge walked straight into the Peach Blossom Courtyard, and she paused in shock. Eldest, Eldest Mississippi. Su Muge nodded to her with a smile. Yes, it's me. A pleasant look spread out over Mei Hua's face. It's true that the eldest miss is back. After bowing with a courtesy to Su Muge, Mei Hua turned back to the room of Zhao. Su Muge walked up and heard the voice of Zhao in a hurry. Mu Mu is back. When Su Muge stepped into the room, she saw Zhao was going to get down her bed with the help of Mei Hua. Mu Mu, finally, you are back. Su Muge kept walking to her bed, took her hands and sat down. Mom, don't cry. I'm back. You are still in the month of confinement and watch out your body. It seemed that Zhao had lost some weight after she had left. It's good to see you again. Now that you're back, I don't need to worry about you. How about that your grandma? Mom, ease your mind. My grandma is fine and she'll be recovered in a few days. Zhao was not expecting this. She had been preparing for her mother's death and funeral during Su Muge's absence. So it was like words of comfort when Su Muge said so. Are you sure? Of course. Grandma even said she would come and visit us when she felt better. Really? Zhao had never seen her mother, Zhang, since they last met many years ago with Su Muge as an infant. Hearing that Zhang was coming back to visit her, she became cheerful. But soon, she felt upset again with worries thinking of her current situation. Su Muge said no more, only asked Mei Hua to take good care of her mother, and went back to her own room. Yueru carried a cup of hot tea into the room, with happiness glowing on her face. Eldest Miss, you've finally come back. How was everything going in the mansion? After you left, Madame and had been sending someone here every day to report to your mother about the new dot born master, and your mother would not eat after she heard about it. Su Muge rubbed between her eyebrows after hearing this. It was part of her fault. She had never been a mother before so that she couldn't understand the sorrow of a mother when she was parted with her child. She only thought that it would be much better for an infant to grow up in a better material environment. She stood up and soothed her dress even if there was no crease. Eldest miss, you are going to. It has been a long time since I last saw my brother. I want to go and visit him. It's the second miss's birthday today. 
Take one of the best handkerchiefs you have sewed with you. Yueru nodded and followed the instruction though she was a little confused. Su Muge went directly to the flowery brook courtyard, where An lived. An was still outside seeing the visitors out, and there were only two or three maids left in the courtyard. Su Muge was stopped by an old maid before she could make her step into the courtyard. The old maid scolded Su Muge, who had a veil. You wild girl without manners. Don't you know that it's not allowed to enter the madam's courtyard? Shut up. How dare to speak to the eldest miss like this? Yueru glared at the old maid in a somewhat imposing manner. Eldest Mississippi. The old maid who was in charge of guarding the courtyard gate looked at Su Muge suspiciously. Apparently, news of the front yard had not reached here yet. It was only a few days ago when An told everybody that Su Muge was not actually getting her treatment in the village, but had ran away with a man. So how could she possibly show up right here? Su Muge didn't bother to explain to her, just pushed her away and went in. You. How dare you intrude into Madam's courtyard like this? You bold girl. It seemed that Su Muge had pushed her without effort, and yet she was already aside after that push. Experiencing so, there was something else in the old maid eyes that was looking at Su Muge. Su Muge ignored her and went in directly. Go and find out which room young master is in. Yes. Su Muge looked around the flowery brook courtyard. It was three times the size of the peach blossom courtyard where she lived, and there were exotic flowers and rare herbs everywhere. Just then, she heard the noise of a baby crying from the room on the far right. She swiftly turned her feet and walked towards it. Who on earth are you? How dare you come and take young master away? As soon as she approached the door, a shrill voice came to her. She frowned and entered the room. A girl in her twenties with a round face were casting her eyes on Ueru with hostility, with a child in her arms. After Su Muge entered the room, she appeared with more alert. I'm the eldest miss of this mansion and I come here to visit my brother. Eldest Mississippi. The round dot faced girl, Sun, was the wet nurse of young master, Su Wenma. And sent her here to look after the baby. When she heard about Su Muge's identity, her light eyebrows frowned. Give my brother to me. Su Muge reached out both of her hands as the girl did not move. The, the body of eldest miss should be treated as priceless treasure. The baby is too heavy, and I'm afraid, afraid that you may get tired. Su Muge sneered. He is my brother. How am I supposed to be afraid of getting tired from carrying him? Give him to me, o.org nobody could refuse such a piercingly cold and firm voice. Sun even shook a bit and gave her the baby with tremble. The baby would soon be one month old. His eyes were open and he looked strong and lovely just as his mother. It seemed that little Wenma knew he was now in the arms of his sister. He looked at her with eyes widened in curiosity. Su Muge gently poked his face and smiled. She took him in her arms, turned aside and was about to leave. Sun was in a panic and was afraid that the baby would be taken away. She went forward to try to stop Su Muge. Eldest miss, where are you taking young master? Su Muge paused. Well, why should I report to you? But, but madam has said. Look what a great temper the eldest miss has. Where did you get the gut to fool around in my courtyard? And stood in the courtyard, with her chest moving up and down from her deep breath caused by the anger. Her eyes were fixed on Su Muge as if they were glued on her. Su Muge looked down and pulled the quilt around little Wenma. She then raised her eyes towards him. Madam, you came back just in time. I really wanted to thank you for your meticulous care for my younger brother these days. It was my fault to bother you for such a long time. After all, you are not his real mother. I'll take him back so as not to cause you more trouble. Anne's eyes were in a line, and her fingertips were trembling with anger. How dare that this little bitch satirized her of not having her own son. It was you who asked young master to be raised up here. 
If you want to take the baby back, I doubt the Lord would agree. Although Anne had long wanted to throw Su Wen Ma out, she would rather keep this little bastard to see more of that half-dot-dead and worrying face of Zhao. I'll explain it to my father. And took one step forward and stopped her. She went close to Su Muge, said in a low voice with her teeth grinding, Do you really think you can take him away so easily when you are right now in my place? Su Muge glimpsed at him with indifference. If I take him away, what are you going to do? Since old lady Meng has bring me back, don't you think she has already known about your evil doings? Let me have a guess. My father would never want to offend Lord Meng, right? There were both fear and astonishment in Anne's eyes which were setting on Su Muge. You, you. Su Muge smiled gently, yet with mockery. Madam, you should know that you'll pay for what you've got. This, is only the start. Chapter 28 An Open Breakdown You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 28 An Open Breakdown Eldest Miss is going to throw young master into the water. What are you waiting for? Go and stop her. Anne's face was ferocious and she tore apart her camouflage. Her cold and piercing voice stimulated all the young and old maids around, and they all hurried towards Su Muge and circled her around. Su Muge adjusted the position of little Wen Ma in her arms. Miss, you go first with young master. I'll stay and fight against them. Ueru insisted on protecting Su Muge and her brother even though she was afraid herself. Her lips were trembling with fear. You are indeed very brave, but with your arms and legs thin like this, you'd better take young master with you and let me stay. Su Muge put little Wen Ma in Ueru's arms, and kept them behind her. What are you doing? Hurry up and grab them. And stared at Su Muge with her face twisted. She believed that with so many people stopping them, Su Muge would be defeated with the inferior in number. Su Muge kicked an old maid who was fighting in the most front. Ouch! The maid fell on the ground, hitting two younger ones. I'll open a gap for you, and you go back directly to the peach blossom courtyard after you go through them. What about miss yourself? They can't hurt me. Su Muge took an accurate hold of the clothes edge of one maid, and pushed her to the other maids that was rushing forward. The maid staggered and fell down one after another. A gap occurred in the circle of people, and Ueru ran out just in time. Don't let that cheap servant run away. Come on and get her. Witnessing that Su Wenma was carried away, and went ballistic. After Ueru left the courtyard, Su Muge rushed to the gate, two steps at a time, closed the gate door and stayed over there. Those young and old maids had been hit heavily by Su Muge, and none of them dared to step forward with Su Muge standing at the gate like a door. Goddess! Su Muge, let me see, to what extent can you rebel against me? And was so mad at Su Muge, and she almost rushed forward on her own. How can I be that dumb to stand still and wait for your people to hit me? Fine, fine, you are fine. Everybody, come on and catch her for me. That fearless little bitch. Su Muge sneered, quickly opened the gate and slipped away. She locked the gate from the outside, leaving the young and old maids inside with no time to react. Open the door. You little bitch. How dare you lock the gate of my courtyard. I shall watch you die in violence. Su Luan acted modestly and apologized several times to Meng Changda before he finally left. Just as he was about to have a look at what was going on in An's courtyard, he already heard the screaming and scolding inside from a distance. Su Luan's face turned as dark as the bottom of a pan. What are you waiting for? Go and open the gate. The menservants were quiet as cicadas in late autumn. They hurried to the courtyard gate with their bodies bent. After a while of turmoil and chaos, the courtyard was finally back in quietness. In the Meng mansion of Shenyang Prefecture, Meng's son held old Lady Meng and helped her enter the courtyard. The maids were signed out by old Lady Meng after their busy work inside. 
Meng's son was taking care of old lady Meng alone and knew that she had something to say. I heard that, you are in favor of the second daughter of Su Luan. Old lady Meng spoke slowly and leisurely, without any anger showing on her face. Meng's son was stunned and she was about to reply. Old lady Meng waved her hand and stopped her. I am not going to find out what plans you had before, but from now on, you may never have that kind of consideration. Yes. Zhao was told that Su Muge had brought little Wenma back, and asked someone to bring him to her. Looking at that tender and white face of her son, she couldn't let him go. At last, Su Muge urged Yueru to take him to her own room considering that it might affect the recovery of Zhang as she was too tired. Su Muge felt the pulse for little Wenma, gave a close inspection to him and then asked Yueru to take him to sleep. Though the child had been brought back, the one who was in charge of the daily goods and materials of the whole mansion was an. Even if Su Luan ordered her to assign enough goods for the child, and could still complete the mission as a vanity project. The most urgent thing right then was to have enough money, otherwise nothing could be easy for them. It seems that we need to find a way to make money. However, the requirements on women were quite harsh back in that era, especially when one was the daughter of a public official. If she could not get enough freedom in her action, it could be a big obstacle to whatever she was going to do next. Yueru, you take good care of the courtyard. Lock the gate door and don't let anybody in until I come back. After that incident in the Flowery Brook Courtyard, she was somehow emboldened and she didn't even ask where Su Muge was heading to. Eldest Miss, don't worry. I won't let a single person in. Su Muge smiled. Great. I can count on you. Su Muge put her veil on and went all the way to Su Luan's study room. She ran into Su Luan on the road. He had just come out from the flowery brook courtyard. Seeing Su Muge with a veil on her eye, the blue veins stood out on Su Luan's forehead. How dare you have the face to see me? Su Muge looked at him behind the veil with coldness. Father, I come here to talk with you about old lady Meng. Hearing this, Su Luan choked on the words that he had no time to utter. He glared at her, snorted heavily and turned into his study room. You. Get in now. Such an attitude did not bother Su Muge at all. She followed him in. Su Luan was seated on the chair once he entered the study room. His eyes were set on Su Muge. Say it out. Su Muge found a chair and sat down too, motionless. Su Luan saw this and bit his lips, but didn't say a word. Su Muge looked down with a smile of irony. Staring at the direction that Su Luan was back from, she assumed that he had been in the place of an. She made quite a disturbance in An's place, and it was no surprise that An had complained to Su Luan about it. But this time, Su Luan held his anger back and did nothing. Perhaps he was recalculating the value of his chess piece, Su Muge. Father, I suppose that you know I took my brother back to the peach blossom courtyard. Su Luan snorted with his nose. You were really bold. It's my fault that I had not been so considerate before. Madaman has to manage the whole Su mansion which is enormous, and educate her own daughter. It was so inconsiderate of me to leave my brother to her to look after. It's a good thing that you are now aware of it. So I decided to take my brother back to the Peach Blossom Courtyard. I heard that my second sister is going to pick herself several maids two days later. I'm wondering if it would be okay for me to go on that day, too, to pick up some helpers. Su Luan frowned upon those words, but his was less angry when he saw the half-dot-worn dress on her. After all, you are the miss of our Su family and need to be looked after by someone. Pick as many maids as you need then. As for your brother, you can keep raising him in the peach blossom courtyard. Just also take with you the person who has been looking after him. Those words were unexpected, and Su Muge felt slightly surprised. It didn't come to her that Su Luan had suddenly become so affable. Thank you very much, father. Su Luan coughed lightly. How did you meet old lady Meng? I was told that you saved her life, 
and was it real? When did you learn those medical skills? And why did I know nothing about it? Su Muge understood that most of the reason behind that change of her father's attitude was because the Meng family. I went to visit my grandma and was on my way home back to our mansion. Then I met a group of people together with old Lady Meng in the nearest town from the Zhao village. At that time, old Lady Meng had a relapse and I treated her with what I had read from the medical books in my spare time. Su Luan looked at Su Muge with his eyes filled with doubt. He had been working his way out in the officialdom for years, and he could never believe that only with a few medical books read, a person could save a patient from the verge of death. When did you read those medical books? And where are they? Su Muge was in no panic even with those sharp eyes of Su Luan stared at her. She was aware that anyone with normal intelligence would not believe in those words, but so what? If father would like to have a look, then I'll go back to find them and bring them to you. Su Luan waved his hand and showed no interest. Can you cure that old illness of old lady Meng? Su Muge straightened her back and shook her head. No. I can't. You can't. Old Lady Meng had that illness for years, so it cannot be cured but only be controlled. So old as Old Lady Meng was, she had high blood pressure and other illness that most aged people got. How could it be easily cured? Unsurprisingly, Su Luan's face hardened when Su Muge finished those words. But. But what? If Old Lady Meng keeps taking care of herself as what I said, it'll be no big problem for her to live another twenty years. Old Lady Meng was about fifty years old this year and it could be considered as a long life in the ancient times. If she could live on for another twenty years, that would be a real longevity. Are you sure? Eighty percent sure. Great. I will take you to the Meng Mansion to express our thanks. You may go back now. Su Muge was pleasant that her first step was out. For things coming up next, she just needed to keep her pace and make her progress little by little. She was surprised that and did not send anybody to cause her any trouble all that night. It was quite peaceful. Perhaps it was Su Luan that had suppressed this. Early next morning, a maid in a peachy long dress came to the gate of the peach blossom courtyard with a tray in her hands. Shortly after, Yueru pulled away the curtain and entered the room. Miss, the Lord has sent something to you. Su Muge played with little one Ma for a while with her head down. Let her in. Yes. The maid came in as the curtain was opened. Eldest Miss, these are from the Lord. He said you could get prepared with them for your visit to the Meng Mansion later. Su Muge glanced at the tray. There lied a water dot colored full sleeve long dress with flabella. Along with it were some jewelries. Okay, I know. Then I'm leaving, eldest Mississippi. After the maid left, Ueru looked at the clothes and jewelries with delight on her face. Eldest Miss, see, the dress is so pretty. I have never seen any cloth as good as this. Su Muge watched her simple laugh and kept playing with little Wenma's tiny hands. Tell the wet nurse to take young master to my mother's room when I leave. Yes. Yueru helped Su Muge to put on the dress that Su Luan had sent her. She was so thin that the dress looked too large on her, making her look like a coat hanger. If she were right, the clothes were originally made for Su Jingwen, and now there was no other choice since Su Muge needed some descent clothes for her visit to the Meng Mansion. With clothes dressed up, Yueru reached out for the veil cap and was about to put it on Su Muge's head. Su Muge stopped her. There's no need. Yueru was a bit stunned. Eldest Mississippi. Are you sure? Su Muge looked at her delicate face in the mirror. The birthmark on her eye was quite outstanding in an unpleasant way. There's no need. It's not any shame after all. Su Muge stood up. Let's go. Chapter 29 Unveiling You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 29 Unveiling, Miss, Here We Are. Yueru jumped off the carriage first, and then helped Su Muge to get down. 
Why, why haven't you put on your veil cap today? When Su Muge raised her head, she saw Su Luan staring at her three steps away. Su Luan didn't see her until now since he had been seated in his carriage before Su Muge had arrived at their gate back at home. She had worn her veil yesterday and he had felt everything was in normal. But now with that veil cap off and showing out her real face, it was too obvious for others to see her ugly dark red birthmark in the sun. Come on. Take the veil hat out and help the eldest miss to put it on. The coldness and calmness in Su Muge's eyes were not vulnerable towards the fury and dislike on Su Luan's face. Father, I did not take the veil hat with me. You, you. The words were not finished when the butler of the Meng family, who had been waiting, came out and welcomed them. Though a bit shocked at his first sight at the birthmark on Su Muge's face. Butler Meng soon collected himself and went forward to greet them with ease. Lord Su, eldest Miss Su, my greetings to both of you. The lord and old lady have been waiting for you in the mansion when they heard about your coming. Please come with me. Su Luan glared at Su Muge. Thank you. Su Muge was told by Yueru that the hometown of the Meng family was Shenyang Prefecture. Decades ago, the father of Lord Meng had received a position in the palace, which was of the highest rank. Therefore, the whole Meng family moved their home to the capital. The father of Lord Meng had passed away because of some sickness a few years ago, and old Lady Meng's health had been in a vulnerable condition since then. This time, Meng Changda sent old Lady Meng back to Shenyang Prefecture for her recovery. All the way in, there were maids passing by now and then. They were surprised at Su Muge's face, yet dared not to look at her one more time. After a quick glimpse, they kept walking and avoided the eye contact with their heads down. With the maid reporting ahead of time, when Su Muge and her father were approaching the glory hall, a delicate figure came outside, and it was Rume, the maid of old lady Meng's. Rume saw Su Muge, who was standing next to Su Luan, at her first sight. When they were together on the way back to Shenyang Prefecture, Su Muge had covered her birthmark with a patch and then with a veil when she had changed back to the costume of a female. So it was the first time that Rume saw her real face. Maybe the birthmark was too obvious in an unpleasant way, Rumen stunned for an instant when saw it. But soon she was back to her normal face and led the two inside. She is the benefactor of our Meng family, so of course, as your grandson, I shall thank her in person. You child. Just as they were outside door, they heard a cheerful voice that was reporting their arrival. When Rume entered with the curtain pulled aid, the voice soon vanished. Lord Su, eldest Miss Su, please. Su Muge followed Su Luan. They entered and saw a large crowd of people in the glory hall. There were noises of breathing out of astonishment when Su Muge stepped in, and she could feel it clearly that the eyes which had been filled with smile were then changed into something else. Su Muge remained calm and greeted old Lady Meng in the hall with Su Luan. My greetings to you old Lady Meng. With a glance at Su Muge's face, old Lady Meng froze a bit, but she soon smiled amiably and asked Su Muge to get up. There's no need to be too polite. Old Lady Meng was the Imperial Mandate Madam, which was an honorary title for a lady with the highest rank designated by the Emperor. Therefore, it was indeed appropriate for Su Luan to greet her with the utmost courtesy. Thank you for looking after my daughter during the trip, Old Lady Meng. Thank you so much, Old Lady Meng, echoed by Su Muge, with her body bowed. I shall thank you instead. If it were not your treatment in time, I could be in any worse condition. When old lady Meng finished her words, a man seated in a position inferior than her stood up and bowed to Su Muge with his hands folded in front. He was in a pale bluish dot white robe with a jade dot decorated belt around his waist. Eldest Miss Su, thank you for saving my grandma's life. Su Muge raised her head and set her eyes on the man. His face was born with gentleness. Even without smiling, there was tenderness in his eyes as if they were telling thousands of words of a lover's prattle. Su Muge, however, with only one glance, noticed the slyness flashed in his eyes. 
what an evil demon hiding under such a harmless sheepskin. Su Muge lowered her eyes in calmness. She turned a little aside and did not accept his bow. Watch out, you scared eldest Miss Su, old Lady Meng spoke just in time. Meng Xiuwen stood up, looked at old Lady Meng, and said gravely, Grandma, your grandson is no wild beast, how could eldest Lady Su be afraid of him? What a clumsy mouth do I have. You won. Your father is waiting for you in the study room. Why not take Lord Su with you and then he can play chess with your father? Meng Xiuwen glanced at Su Muge, who still kept looking down, and nodded with a smile. Sure. After Su Luan left with Meng Xiuwen, the smile on old lady's face eased a bit. She asked Su Muge to sit down. Su Muge obeyed. Old lady, are you feeling better? I took the medicine according to your recipe last night, and had a good sleep. Follow the recipe for one month, and then you may recuperate by taking special care of the food you eat. Eldest Miss Sue, you mean that Grandma doesn't have to take that bitter medicine ever after? Sue Muge raised her eyes and looked to the direction of the voice. There was a girl at the age of 12 or 13 in a light dot yellow horse dot face dress which was made of four pieces of cloth. This is my third granddaughter, Meng Tian Tian. She is the naughtiest one. With no shyness toward such a comment at all, Meng Tian Tian squeezed her nose in a lovely way. The imperial doctor said grandma had to take medicine for the rest of her life in order to keep her heath condition stable. But now you are saying it'll be enough for just one month. Are you even better than an imperial doctor? A girl in a blue horse dot face dress sitting in a position superior than Meng Tian Tian asked. She did not cover the sarcasm in her words nor on her face. Eldest Madame Meng, who was seated beside her, frowned, and looked at her with dissatisfaction. Shu Shu, what are you talking about? Meng Shu Shu snorted. Apparently, she was not afraid of eldest Madame Meng. Mom, I said nothing wrong. Grandma, she appears the same age as I, and how can she have such outstanding medical skills? I bet she's lying. The face of old lady Meng went dark at once. Shu Shu, shut up. Eldest Madam Meng scolded her. Su Muge did not panic. She raised her eyes slowly to look at this little girl who was hostile to her. If she trusted her memory, there was a lady in the Meng mansion that her sister had a good relation with. Then it must be this one. It was right to come forward when a friend was in trouble. However, the time and person should be both carefully chosen. If not, horrible mistakes could happen. I bet you do not feel good when you have your period every time. It was unusual and unexpected for someone to bring up a topic like this in public. After all, it was the little secret of girls which might offend others. Even old lady Meng looked a bit unhappy with her eyebrows frowned when she turned to Su Muge. Shu Shu, come on, apologize to eldest Miss Su. Madam, it's fine. I understand the doubt of the second Miss. But what I've said just now was not nonsense. The body of the second miss is of the cold type, which means she can hardly sweat even during the hottest three periods in summer. And even if she does, the sweat feels cold, which implies her sickness of body coldness. Su Muge looked at Meng Shu Shu, calm and motionless. Is it true that second miss dare not drink even a bit of cold water on ordinary days? And do you suffer from constant diarrhea once having any food of the cold type? And do you experience a bad headache and feel hard to breath when you are on your period? Meng Shu Shu could no longer argue with those words and her face turned pale as she heard them. The look of eldest Lady Meng also changed. She had only two children. Meng Xiuwen, her son, the eldest master of the Su mansion, Meng Shu Shu, her daughter. Meng Shu Shu got her first period two or three years ago, and she had been suffering from it ever after. It was like she had some serious illness every time. Eldest Lady Meng had taken her daughter to see a lot of doctors and it never worked. She was worried because any woman with a child would know that it could be very difficult to get pregnant with such a body condition. 
old Lady Meng sensed some inappropriateness. She was not in a good condition herself, and let alone to bother those of her granddaughters. Datsu Muge lowered her head, took a sip of tea from the porcelain cup on the table in front of her, and said no more. Look at me, so slow in response. Since eldest Miss Sue comes to our mansion, I shall take her to have a walk in our garden. I've brought back various flowers and other plants. The young girls like them. Let Tian Tian take them to have a walk in the mansion. Eldest Madam Meng looked at Meng Tian Tian, who was seated at the moment. Meng Tian Tian was the third daughter of Meng Changda with a concubine. She was delicate and knew the art of conversation. Therefore, it was a life not too tough for her in the Meng mansion. Old Lady Meng grinned and nodded her head. Go and play around. Take good care of eldest Miss Su. Yes. Meng Tian Tian stepped forward and took Su Muge's hand. Sister Su, let's go. Although feeling a bit reluctant, Meng Shu Shu also stood up at the harsh glance of eldest Lady Meng. A few more girls followed and Su Muge did not not bother. The size of the Meng mansion was much larger than that of the Su mansion. There was a waterside pavilion in the garden. The season of lotus flower was gone, but the water lily decorated the lake with great beauty. Sister Su, did you learn your medical skills from a teacher? Meng Tian Tian had so many questions for her. Su Muge was patient enough to cope with these, and she picked some questions of no great importance to answer. I'm so tired. I need to go and have a rest. Meng Shu Shu was annoyed by their side when she thought of what Su Muge had just said in the hall. She took her period as a shortage. And with one shortage revealed like that in public, no one could be happy. Su Muge glimpsed at her with indifference. Ouch. Suddenly, Meng Tian Tian stumbled on a stone and nearly fell down. Being grabbed up Su Muge swiftly, she still sprained her ankle. Ah, uh, it hurts. Meng Tian Tian frowned and she almost cried. Let me have a look. Su Muge squatted down and was about to check Meng Tian Tian's feet. The maid aside held Meng Tian Tian and pulled her aside. It's too much to bother you, eldest Miss Su. We are going to take third Miss back. Miss, please go to the waterside pavilion for a rest. Meng Tian Tian also looked at Su Muge with her head raised. Sister Su, I'm fine. Su Muge nodded. Sure. Several maids helped Meng Tian Tian leave. Seeing Meng Shu Shu and others sitting in the waterside pavilion, Su Muge turned and went to sit on a stone bench in the garden instead. Eldest Miss Su, why are you here alone? A slim figure came out slowly from the back of a tree. Chapter 30 An Ugly Monster You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 30 An Ugly Monster Meng Xiuwen smiled at Su Muge with his misty amorous eyes looking at her, and sat in front of Su Muge like they were familiar with each other. Although Su Muge wanted to make a name for herself regarding her medical skills by taking advantage of the Meng mansion, it didn't mean she wanted to get much involvement with this family. She could easily tell the probe and doubt from Meng Xiuwen a short while ago. He was not such a simple person as he appeared. Just as Meng Xiuwen sat down, Su Muge stood up and stepped back to keep a certain distance from him. The scenery here in the Meng mansion is beautiful, I came here by accident. I didn't mean to disturb Master Meng, I'll leave. Su Muge turned around and was about to go away. It said that the eldest Miss Su could treat a person even without feeling the pulse. Su Muge stopped gently, and realized that he was talking about the things happened between Meng Shu Shu and her back in the glory hall. It's surely necessary that only by feeling the pulse carefully can I know the exact physical condition of the second Miss Meng. Meng Xiuwen walked behind her. A sense of disgust showed in his eyes as he saw her birthmark, but he quickly adjusted his mood. He approached Su Muge slowly, and they were just half a foot away. Su Muge had been suffering from malnutrition, which made her look very skinny there was slight bluish yellow in her skin. 
Despite her delicate facial feature, she had nothing to do with the word beautiful with such a skin color. There was a scent of rouge powder on Meng Xiuwen. Su Muge was about to back away when a shape voice rose behind her. Su Muge, why are you with my brother, what do you want to do? Meng Xu Xu came with some maids aggressively, protecting Meng Xiuwen behind her like a hen protecting its chicken baby. Meng Xiuwen raised his eyebrows and glanced at Su Muge. It seemed that he did not intend to say anything. I am also wondering why young Master Meng appeared here. Meng Shu Shu stared at Su Muge and said, Su Muge, what do you mean by that? Here is Meng Mansion, does my brother have to tell you where he is? Su Muge looked at the brother and sister indifferently. So, I really don't know the answer of your question, Second Mississippi. Meng Shu Shu was startled, and so did Meng Xiuwen. The question was why Su Muge was here with Meng Xiuwen. Since Meng Xiuwen was the master of the Meng Mansion, he could show up anywhere he wanted. Su Muge didn't know he was here. It was just a coincidence that the two of them met here. You, you're so ugly with a sharp tongue. Knowing she was not an opponent of Su Muge, Meng Shu Shu tended to take the strategy of personal abuse. Meng Xiuwen slightly frowned, glancing at Su Muge who was as calm as ever, and scolded with low voice. Shu Shu, stop your nonsense, apologize to Miss Su immediately. Although Meng Shu Shu was a bit afraid of her brother who smiled all day long but had never been indulgent with her, only she straightened her neck stubbornly. I didn't say anything wrong. Isn't she an ugly monster? If I had grown up like that, I would have been too shamed to face others. Shu Shu, shut up. Su Muge glanced at the brother and sister. I have learned all about the upbringing in the Meng Mansion from you too. Before they could speak again, she left along the way she had come. She would find another way, and it would better to keep away from the Meng Mansion. When Su Muge walked back to the Glory Hall, Su Luan sent somebody to her and told her they were going to leave. Su Muge bowed old Lady Meng a farewell and left. As soon as Su Muge left, a maid went to the glory hall and told old Lady Meng about what had happened in the garden. Old Lady Meng, with her eyes half dot closed, waved for the maid to leave. And Mama, who had been serving old Lady Meng, walked into the house with a bowl of sweet lotus seed soup. Old Lady, you're tired. Have some soup. Old Lady Meng raised her eyes and looked at her, with a faint breath coming out. What do you think she is up to? And Mama went up to her and gave a massage to her shoulders. Old lady, aren't you very fond eldest Miss Sue? She is very capable and has her own plans. But she isn't suitable for our main mansion. So from now on, it's better off having nothing to do with her. Sue Muge's father was born in a poor family, and he had such a high position only because he had abandoned his original wife and married another who came from a higher class. Moreover, the status of her biological mother was way too low. If she were married to the son of a concubine of the Meng family, it would be her great honor. But old madam, how about your health? Old lady Meng waved her hand. Xu Xu was right on one thing. I have gone to see so many imperial doctors, and I know it's a matter of another a year or two despite of their vague words. How can a girl under fifteen be such skillful? Last time in the Sioux Mansion, I have already paid her off. And Mama tightened her lips. It was not that easy to repay someone for saving the life. But she dared not say it out. How about the illness of the second Mississippi? The wife of the eldest master will take care of it. Shenyang Prefecture isn't small. There should be some female doctors who are proficient in this. Yes. And Mama didn't answer any more, and massaged the old lady occasionally. Out of the Meng mansion, Su Luan said he needed go to Yaman, the government office, to handle some things. He asked the servants to send Su Muge home, and then left. It was almost noon, and the streets were getting more and more crowded. With the dress and jewelry sent today, there were also silver worth 50 liang. It was supposed to be part of his private savings. Since she was out here, 
there was no reason for Su Muge to go back empty.handed. Stop at the pharmacy ahead. Su Muge opened the curtain slightly and said to the driver. Eldest miss, the Lord asked you to go back home directly. Stop at the pharmacy ahead, and don't make me say it the third time. Su Muge said with a firm tone. Even if the driver didn't want to, he still stopped the carriage. Su Muge lifted the curtain and jumped down the carriage. Wait for me here. Su Muge walked into the pharmacy. A familiar voice made her stunned, she turned around quickly and hide in the shadow behind the door. After a moment, a figure in a Taoist robe came out from the pharmacy. Senior Taoist priest, we really don't have the herbs you want. Please ask somewhere else. The Taoist priest complained with a cold snort, and seemed extremely dissatisfied. How can you open a pharmacy with nothing useful? He swung his sleeves and left. Su Muge didn't came out from the back of the door until she was sure the figure had walked away. This Taoist priest truly was the one who had gave her antidote for months, but why did he show up here, was he going to catch her? The shopkeeper was unhappy about being scolded, and was shocked when he turned around and saw a person suddenly appeared. Ghost. Su Muge felt speechless but said calmly, Do you have fire glossy Ganoderma? The shopkeeper now slowly came to his sense, but kept his head down from Su Muge's face. The birthmark was way too scary. Fire glossy Ganoderma, yes, yes, we have it. In the state of Chu, fire glossy Ganoderma with ordinary quality was common, and was really not that precious. Su Muge took a look at the fire glossy Ganoderma on the counter, and it was indeed the worst. Dot, what was that Taoist priest looking for? and why are you so angry? Speaking of this, the shopkeeper snorted. He wanted to buy the ginseng with over 500 years of age, and the fire glossy Ganoderma with an age over a thousand. I don't have any here, and nor does the whole Shenyang prefecture. Su Muge didn't ask more, but bought a lot of other herbs and some tools to make pills. Take these to that carriage. The pharmacy apprentice took the stuff and said, Yes, I will carry it to that carriage right away. Su Muge walked out of the pharmacy, and was going to a bookstore. After all, she knew too little about this world. Bang! When passing by an alley, a black figure fell at her feet from the sky. Su Muge stepped backward with alert. She frowned and looked at the person who was lying on the ground and huddled himself up. The man was badly wounded. There was a smell of blood. She didn't want to get into any unnecessary trouble, so she turned away. But the man suddenly reached out and grabbed her ankle. Su Muge paused with a tremble, and looked back at him. The man raised his head with difficulty, with blood coming down all over his face. It was unable to tell his original appearance. Help, help me. Su Muge moved her feet and tried to get rid of the man, but he was determined, and grasped her ankle tightly and won't let it go. The harder Su Muge struggled, the tighter he grasped. Finally, Su Muge stopped. Under such a weak condition, you still grasped me tightly for one minute, which showed your strong sense of survival. Fine, I'll save you. The man seemed to hear what Su Muge said, and gradually eased his hand. Some noise of footsteps came into Su Muge's ears, and she managed to carry the man into an empty house. Soon, a group of men in coarse cloth came to the place they had been. There are bloodstains on the ground. He can't be too far. Come on. Hiding behind the door, Su Muge vaguely heard the words coming from the outside. After the noise of footsteps of those people gradually vanished, she squatted down to see the man on the ground. The man had a number of stab wounds, but none of them was fatal. The only serious wound was caused by arrow in the abdomen. The arrow had been pulled out, but the barbs must have hurt the organ and the wound was still bleeding. She now had no medicine, no tools, and not even the most basic thing for hemostasis. The man had lost a lot of blood. If leaving him untreated, he would probably die. 
Su Muge looked down at her palm, she hadn't used the her superpower since had been poisoned. You asked me to save you, and you'll have to bear the consequences no matter what it is. Su Muge stretched out her hand, and moved her palm to the man's wounded abdomen gradually. Soon, she felt her palm getting warm, and it felt like a heated sucker was added onto the palm. While healing the wound, Su Muge felt something scurrying in her body, and she groaned in pain. It was not until the heat on the palm faded gradually that her discomfort began to wear off. Su Muge removed her palm from the wound, sat on the ground, and wiped her forehead which was already sweaty. The man's wound seemed not changed expect that bleeding had stopped. But Su Muge knew, the force just now would have certainly cured the man's damaged organs. After a breath, Su Muge struggled to stand up, and put a pill into the man's month. Dead or alive, it's now up to yourself. The moment she left, the eyelids of the man on the ground moved, and then he slowly opened his eyes.